Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. All right, welcome back, YouTubers and Mad fans. This is Mad Money Shot, bringing some more Mad and 18 money plays. I got a really great formation, a main scheme out of the Philadelphia Eagles playbook. Uh, this right here is one of the best glitchiest runs I've found yet. The blocking is incredible. Uh, I'm really excited to bring this to you. Uh, this is something I was just labbing, and I found something amazing. It, it, it actually worked out pretty good because I had somebody that requested something from the Eagles anyway, and I found this. I, I w went and looked at it because they requested it, and I went and I found this running play, and this whole scheme is amazing, but the running play, the first running play I'm going to show you is absolutely amazing. Now, this whole uh, setup is on my uh, Patreon account. It's about seven or eight plays, uh, full scheme. Uh, the first play I'm going to show you there at the bottom is the quick pitch. Uh, which I just rotated past. But either way, if you guys want to see part two, make sure you hit the like button for that. And I'll put up part two, which will be mostly passing plays. I got some really good passing plays out of this as well. Um, but other than that, if you want to see the full video, uh, you guys know the deal. Check it out on my Patreon now. Link in the description below. You won't have to wait. You can get the full thing when it comes out rather than wait a week or so or whatever the period of time it takes to come out. So first play, there's no real adjustments you can make here. Um, there's not, no adjustment you can make at all because you got a guy in motion, but you see it's basically two tight ends uh, with one tight end in the slot. Uh, you're going to see how this one tight end motions over, and uh, basically what really makes this play great is what the right tackle is doing. Watch what the right tackle does. He gets out, even though that outside that uh, right end has his outside shoulder, he gets out, sets the block, passes it off, and then blocks another guy downfield. And that's amazing. Now this year I had to slow down as well too. Look at how many defenders I got hemming at this sideline. I have a slow power back, and watch what happens. One little juke move and all three of them whiff. I mean, what is this running is OP in this game. I mean, you guys have to be running the football early on. I mean, that that is that makes this game right now uh, is who can run the ball the best. Because I didn't even mean to lab this with LeGarrette Blunt. I thought like typically if I'm running a power or an outside run like this, I mean the the power helped right there as he breaks that tackle. One thing I learned from doing this is LeGarrette Blunt is an absolute animal. But either way, like I was saying. Typically, if I'd be labbing, I'd be using a speed back, and you're going to see how successful this play is with somebody who's not even that fast. Just imagine how good this would be working with somebody that actually has speed. So let's go ahead and let's keep running this. Look how the blocking sets up. I mean, the blocking is just disgusting. There's nobody around. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, this is the most savage blocking run I could say that I've ever seen uh, in Madden 18, which I know hasn't been out very long. I put out a video already that I thought was the best run play. I put out two run plays already, but this one by far is just is just so unbelievable, the way that it blocks and the way that it sets up. And like I said, it's really all about that right tackle. Look at this right tackle. The, 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 I think it's a right end is outside, and somehow the right tackle gets outside of that right end. The right end is so far out. There's no way that the right tackle should be able to get to it. And somehow he gets out. Like here again, we'll see it again. His job is that right end. Look how he gets outside. Look how he kicks outside and seals that edge on that defensive end. I've not seen that in any other running play. And he's doing it consistently in this run play. And then at times he moves on. I don't know if it's because Lane Johnson's that good. Watch that right tackle again get that right end. That right end is outside. How is Lane Johnson getting outside there? And then he gets downfield and sets another block. I mean, like I said, I don't think it's because Lane Johnson's that good. Maybe it is. Uh, but either way, this run play is just so dirty. Uh, and it's going to get you big plays every time. Um, so like I said, make sure you check this out. I also, I'm going to put Danell Pumphrey. I think uh, I might have already done it. Um, yeah, I'm going to switch Danell Pumphrey here just to show you what it looks like with an actual speed back. Danell Pumphrey is a 91 speed. It just gives you a little bit more margin for error as you see. Um, you know, the speed makes up for, I mean, the first one wasn't even good. I mean, it, it, honestly, the Laguerre Blunt was running better, but I would suggest running this with a speed back is essentially what I'm saying. And you can just see, I mean, look at the blocking. It's just so dirty. It doesn't matter who your running back is. It's disgusting. So uh, I think that's the last time I run. I'm not really sure. Uh, no, I still got another one here. Um, but like I said, this is just, you know, one of the best run plays I've seen in this game so far. Uh, but I already used that in the title, best run play Madden 7 or Madden 18, so I can't use it again. So the title is going to be something different. So let's go ahead, let's move on to the next play. I don't. I always try to give you guys schemes because you don't want to run the same play over and over and over because it can kind of give the play away. So basically the halfback counter, which is the top play you see right there, um, that's a really good play to run in conjunction with that first play, just so you're not giving away uh, what you're doing all the time. I mean, that motion can really be a dead giveaway. So a lot of these plays are going to have that same tight end motion. Uh, but you can see here, essentially, um, this is more, it's not an outside run. It kind of looks like it is in the diagram, but you really want to run up the middle because that's where the hole opens up. You can see how that wall of blockers just kind of creates uh, like a whole wall on the left side and kind of opens up the middle. This is not as explosive as a run as the last play. And I'm not going to say that it is. 
um, but it's still just a good counter. You know what I'm saying? People are going to start blitzing to the right side where, where the motion is coming from, and they might start, you know, stacking to that side and shifting their line and shifting their linebackers. So hit them with this nice counter. Like I said, it's not nearly as explosive. It's a good play, uh, and the read is completely different. It's going the opposite way. It looks like you're supposed to go behind the center and the guard, but in reality, you're just kind of going, I'm not the center guard, the guard and left tackle, but in reality, you're just looking for a hole, which will typically be open right in the middle because they kind of let everybody in. Uh, there was a big hole there. I kind of missed it. But either way, this is just a really good way to keep uh, keep your opponent off guard. Um, and like I said, I have a lot of really good pass plays that have the same motion that I'll show you uh, here in a minute. Um, because, you know, I, like I said, you got to have, you got to mix up. You can't just, just run the ball the whole game, obviously. Uh, but like I said, there is, this does have ability to get explosive plays. I try to put Deno Pumphrey back in there again. I'm switching Pumphrey and Blunt out, uh, in and out. You probably want somebody, whenever you run up the middle, you want somebody with a good acceleration. Uh, and this is why, so you can hit holes like this. Man, if I just stayed outside right there, I'd have been gone. But we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the next play. And uh, like I said, we're going to continue with uh, with the running plays. I got some really good, uh, I'm sorry, not a running play. We're going to continue with the pass plays. I got some really good pass plays here. So let's keep going back into this deuce Y flex. Every year it seems like the Eagles have some of the better plays uh, in, in better playbooks. So we're going to go with the curl U hook, the one at the top there. That play is, um, this is one of the routes I look for every year. Every year there's a route like this, which is basically an instant open route. And basically this route right here is going to get open, uh, essentially against most coverages, it's just going to get open right away. Especially with the new zones where they don't really cover low well, this route's going to basically beat it to death. As you can see right off the bat, um, I get a nice, uh, a nice little open catch right there um, underneath the corner who's getting pulled back. So we'll go ahead and run this a couple times. You can, you can make some additional adjustments. I typically want the running back to block. I don't think you really need him doing anything there. Um, just blocking is good. The B route on a deep out route is good again. And I like to put the Y tight end into a into a slant. Uh, but it's all about this play. I mean, I can make all these other adjustments all I want. But it's really this play is really a one read play. Uh, and if it's covered, then your other options are, are, are there. Like I said, slanting the Y route. I think putting the X on an in route and then deep route or uh, smart routing it again is pretty good. But they're all just basically timing patterns. If your if your primary read, which is this tight end, isn't open, you want speed on this tight end too. You don't want uh, a slow tight end. Um, like I, I have Zach Ertz running over the middle. He's a possession guy. I got Burton, who's like an A6 speed running this outside route. But you can just see how he just gets open instantly there. I had to wait a little bit because of the jamming corner. Kind of messed up my timing a little bit. If he wasn't there, he'd been he'd have been a much quicker read. But you don't want to throw into a pick. He's still got to make a read. He's going to get open uh, really fast. But like I said, you, you don't want to uh, make that mistake and, and throw it to early. Right there, man. He's just wide open uh, for a nice little 10-yard catch and run 12 yards. Uh, like I said, I'm not saying that this is going to be uh, a home run play. But if you're getting blitzed heavy, this is perfect. And you can see how you can kill a defense with paper cuts. I mean, these are these are important plays to have in your back pocket. Look at the separation he's getting. Linebackers can't cover this guy. I mean, that's just outstanding. I'm not sure if I'm counting how many yards he's getting. It looks like he's getting more like uh, 15. And I think I'm only giving him credit for like 10 or 12. But um, he's, I mean, he's just he's just be beating it every time. I'm not really looking at these other routes. Uh, I'm just kind of forcing it to my man here and letting him make a play. He's getting close to the 15 just about every time. So, um, but like I said, these other routes are pretty decent if you set them up um, with just slants and in routes, and, and you kind of you kind of go from A to to Y. Your read progression would go A to Y to probably B right there. Uh, I probably could have went anywhere because it was a corner blitz to the side I was going, uh, but a really good play. Uh, nevertheless, so let's go ahead and let's move on. I think we got about one play left, but if I'm not uh, if I'm not wrong, I think the last play I want to show is a, is a run play here again. All right, so next up, real quick, I'm going to show uh, the halfback dive. Uh, it doesn't sound too exciting, but uh, I'm just going to show a, a slight adjustment that I make uh, that makes it really uh, more effective, especially against uh, cover four. So we're going to go to the top play there, and I'm going to. Um, I'll keep going against 4-3. I've been going against that the whole time. So we're basically going to uh, motion this tight end over here. And what this is going to do is basically going to change the center of the line of scrimmage. Now your center is right behind the pulling guard. Not the pulling guard, but the uh, the guard, which is free to get to the second level. And you see how that creates a pretty big hole uh, when you do that. So, I mean, I'm seeing a gap there. If the gap was on the other side, I'd, I'd flip it to the other side. Uh, but since that, ga that guard doesn't have somebody right in his face, uh, it really makes him, you know, get free to get downfield a little bit. And, uh, and make a play. But like I said, if I saw a gap, they're, they're kind of shifting over because they're expecting it to the strong side. But if I saw a gap on the other side, I'd run to the other side. Uh, but right here, I mean, it's just a really good 
uh, nice size hole. I'm getting about five to ten every time. More than that, actually. That was the lowest right there. That was about eight yards, and that was the shortest carry. But uh, really good. You want to power back with good acceleration again to run this play. Um, you know, nothing too crazy. If I'd have got outside a little bit there with a little little move, I'd have been fun. I'd have been much better off. But nothing too crazy. So I just wanted to show that real quick. 